So our next topic is polarity cosmology. Polarity therapy is unique in having a worldview to support the therapeutic methods. The ancient wisdom traditions that informed Dr. Stone, especially the traditions of the Himalayan region, provide us a wealth of material that can be very, very helpful in therapy. So I'd like to describe for you the cosmology or the system that uh, is behind Dr. Stone's uh, therapeutic ideas. For the polarity cosmology, we use a analogy. And the analogy is, imagine you are a traveler moving to a foreign place and taking up residence in a new place. And we could draw our traveler as a smiley face, for lack of something else. And we're referring here to consciousness. Consciousness survives death, precedes birth. There is continuity of consciousness. That's a given in this method. There is a wealth of information to support this. It is definitely anomalous in terms of science. But even within the scientific literature, there is a wealth of material to support this. Dr. Stone's view of reincarnation, or the survival of consciousness, is not denominational. It is not uh, affiliated with any particular religion. Uh, many religions, the uh, concept can be identified. And here we're not specifically oriented towards any one of them. So imagine this consciousness is on a journey, traveling to a new place. And this could be called the journey of the soul. And an excellent reference is the book by that title. If you have not read that, it's very eye-opening and very useful for clients who have a feeling that they are a victim of circumstances. So in that journey, imagine you come to a new place and a series of events can be expected. You need a place to live. You need a dwelling. And first you'll make a uh, blueprint. You'll make a uh, idea of your dwelling. It could be located here or there. It could be this tall or this wide. And at the blueprint level, everything, all possibilities exist. And then in time, you'll start a building phase. And in the building phase, things will get more settled, more dense. And the further you get into the building phase, the more you will find that the um, you know, changes are harder to make. It's getting more and more set. And then, eventually, you complete the building and you move in. And now things are quite dense. You bring your possessions and decorate and get it set up just the way you like. And this could be so called the progression of consciousness into form. And we could use a red arrow to indicate the progressive um, form, formalization of the idea of the blueprint. And then an interesting thing happens as you live in this uh, place. We eventually, we begin to have an, the experience begins to inform our understanding, our self-awareness. And we could depict that as kind of a reversal leading to a return current, a return signal back up. For example, you build a house, and then you realize later that the window 
Could have been a little over to the side to get the view better, or the door doesn't exactly fit the easiest traffic pattern. And so in time, you maybe need more space for something. In time, by living in the space, then you start to adapt and do some home improvements. And those then form another reversal. And that reversal then continues the cycle. So we can see an emerging diagram in which consciousness creates the beginning of an idea. That idea starts to be implemented and it becomes fully developed. And then through that, we learn the value of it and are able to make improvements. And literally, we're doing this all the time. The system itself is called a recurrent feedback loop. That through the experience, we understand the value. And then through the value, we begin to uh, make amendments. So this is a polarity cosmology that this is going on all the time, and that our life consists of an outgoing signal from a subtle level to a dense level, and then a return signal from the dense level back to the subtle level. And we do this microscopically, for example, in our breathing. We inhale and exhale, and our arteries and veins, our motor and sensory nerves, everywhere we look, we will find going out and coming back. In childhood development, we find it in the child. The toddler wants autonomy, and then they want to be able to come home. In our relationships, we find it in falling in love and then experiencing our individuality. Falling in love, experiencing our individuality. And then societally, we go through cycles of more uh, conservative or more liberal policy making effects. Over and over and over again, we find recurrent feedback loops going out and coming back is the dominant theme. And the whole idea of polarity therapy is that this is happening in the body, it's happening outside the body, it's happening as an energy field effect. And if we can see the world through that lens, then we can have some very good effects. We can. Uh, the uh, therapeutic possibilities are quite substantial. There is an interesting phenomenon as part of this in that our senses sort of limit us to this zone. This is the, the physical realm. And we, our senses are organized really to detect this information. So our uh, we have somewhat of a bias towards this and somewhat of a less. Um, this is uh, too soft, it's too uh, subtle. We don't appreciate it as part of the whole package. But this gives the basis for a truly holistic approach because we could name these. This level is the level of mind. This is the level of feelings or impulses. And this is the level of body. And if we have as our founding concept for healthcare the unity that all of these are always on board, all of these are always part of any process. If we can really hold that, then we have a truly holistic approach. We have a, uh, an opportunity to really see things in their fullness. And this was one of Randolph Stone's primary ideas. Now we could give some language to these. The arrow moving from the subtle to the dense is called yang in Asian cultures. We've played with all different words for that. We settled on yang and yin. This one is called yin. 
the return current back towards subtle. The orange we call neutral. And neutral is maybe not the best term. It comes from science because we have the neutron compared to the proton and electron. Uh, but neutral sort of implies a little less dynamic than it really is. This is really quite a magical phenomenon, the reversal. For instance, when you take a breath, breathe in and then there's a pause before you breathe out. And then you breathe out and there's a little pause before you breathe in. These uh, reversal moments are temporary but quite profound. Similarly in your circulation, what happens in the heart and the capillaries is a reversal. Uh, similarly, the motor and sensory nerves. Uh, that reversal, uh, the word neutral will, uh, will live with it, but just to put a little note that it's actually a very dynamic thing, not just uh, as, uh, as placid or as uh, passive as the word might suggest. So then we have uh, a whole curiosity about the nature of the mind. It's the attitudes and expectations which come from various sources. And the whole uh, inquiry into the nature of feelings or emotions and uh, impulses. Many people, you could ask them, why did you do the significant things that you did in your life? And their answer is that it would be, I just felt like it. You know, that fundamentally it's not necessarily a rational process. It's a combination of deciding what not to do and then a following of one's own intuition and these other more subtle variables. And then the physical body is notable in this view that, for instance, if there's something happening in the physical body, Say we found a particular portion of the body had a particular effect going on. In this model, we would expect that the same effect is present in the more subtle layers. And that, so that would become part of our inquiry at all times. Uh, you know, a truly mind-body unified one system and in uh, modern medicine, a person has an emergency, they go in and get stitched up, and the question is very, very rarely asked. You know, okay, you've had this accident, you've had this injury, you've had this illness, and we can save your life through our working with the physical body, but it's worthy of our inquiry what's going on in your life. What were the preceding conditions? Uh, that occurred just prior, the, maybe the month prior, or three months prior to the appearance of symptoms. In this model, we'd be inquiring about the feelings in the mind while we're also taking care of the body. This speaks to the emergence of the yin aspect of healthcare. Uh, we live in a time where healthcare is dominantly a yang practice. Fix it, fix it, fix it. And we want to open the door into a yin practice where there's a reflective self-inquiry as part of the healing process. Then there's one more little bit I would like to mention, which is the, um, the uh, each level, it can be found to have subcategories. So we could draw little dotted lines to divide these. Because as we crystallize, we need to take care of specific functional aspects. And those aspects are called in Asian wisdom traditions the five elements. So the three principles, three principles include, include yang, Yin and neutral, three principles, and then five elements include uh, 
so-called ether, air, fire, water, and earth. These illuminate various functions that are necessary to sustain life. And uh, so our, our total package of a healthcare system based on polarity cosmology is the three principles and the five elements. What's happening with the yang, the red arrow, the reversal, the yin, the blue arrow, and then within that, are there functional effects that can be detected? Ether at the throat, air at the chest, fire at the solar plexus, water in the lower belly, and earth at the pelvic floor, including the structure of the body. That together gives us the equivalent of a sort of a map. We could say that from a polarity point of view, we're dealing with a small town which has a three avenues using the same color code, three avenues, yang, yin, and, excuse me, I reverse colors, so yin, blue, neutral, orange, and yang is red, three avenues, and then five streets. And our inquiry with new clients is very much where might we meet for this person is the disturbance is the disturbance it'll be a combination initially of some um, combination it'll be for instance this is yin avenue yang avenue this is ether air fire water and earth we could say a person with a particular condition, we use body reading and we listen to their story and observe the challenges they're having in their life and we come up with one particular address. And we can use that address with very good effect. This can help us. It makes the work very efficient. Uh, the person feels heard at an energetic level and we're able to get to the heart of the question rather quickly. So, polarity therapy cosmology, I invite you to really take this in. Uh, I'll read about it in the book, Dancing with Yin and Yang. The discussion is expanded. And just contemplate what is the, uh, the um, great value of having a cosmology to support the healthcare vision. It leads us to such uh, values as having a sense of purpose, and knowing how larger forces are at work, being able to uh, hold the energy aspect in addition to the physical aspect. And that opens the door into a much more holistic approach to healthcare.